Well, hello, boys and girls. Hey, how hello. are you doing? Hey, I'm doing okay. How does it sound okay? It sounds great. Sounds I just perfect, uh, yeah. set up a, a new microphone here. Oh, nice. Uh, so now I can nice playing around with this uh, um, shotgun mic in the, in my office as opposed to. Uh, and actually, you can't see the mic, can you? No, it did. I did for a second when you for hand your second, hand up, yeah. and then it disappeared. So yeah. it's, let's see if I get it over there. Yeah, and almost, now almost. yeah there. I can see that. There, there it is. There it yeah, is. There right. it is. Okay, and then it goes away. It's your own personal green screen. That's right. Hey, oh yeah. You know, well, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> right. I was gonna say you sound really good from space. There's no echo, which you think there would be. You know, Hello, yeah. I'm way out in space. <laughs> How's everybody? <laughs> So you're like sitting on top of the actual satellite that's channeling all the zoom yeah. calls oh yeah magnificent yep. just so, so everyone on. knows dave fenoy is why we don't have hbo max right now that's exactly why he's sitting on the satellite blocking the signal so. <laughs> i was gonna say i've done so, a lot of work in the last year for hbo max you know, right hey you know you deserve it you, you've you've earned it I, I, know. I was like wow is there some problem with hbo max now? <laughs> yeah. you're sitting on it <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for taking time out of what I'm sure is a crazy busy schedule right now to talk to us. Well, you know, he, it's busy all the time, and then you throw Christmas in. Right. I was going to say ho holidays. Yeah, always. Shopping, uh, cards, yes. uh, hiding presents from my wife and kids. Ah. Right, right. Louie and I solved that problem by don't have any loved ones or friends. That's the solution, and you're you're good to go. So. No no loved ones? Yeah. That's <laughs> that's fairly, that sounds fairly bleak. Yeah, that's why that, that's why the house looks like this. Right. Uh, what yeah. are, What are those two strings hanging down uh, behind you? These guys. Um, actually, it's uh, I, I did a little pulley system so that I can um, have my VR headset constantly. Uh, the, the battery runs out really quick on the Quest 2. Uh -huh. So because I played games for an, an enormous amount of time, mm -hmm. I would uh, prefer to just keep going rather than have to stop. <laughs> and so, you know what? Like, I know this is crazy and, and, and we haven't started yet. So yeah. how old are you? Myself? Louis? Yeah. Louis? I am 37. Okay. You are right in the pocket of the average gamer <clears throat> age. Yeah. People think it's lower. It's not. No. Exactly. And you've been exactly. playing games for about 15, 20 years, haven't you? Yes. Uh, my whole life. I've been a, a my, no. my, my gaming started with Legend of Zelda. Like I, I, wow. I remember, uh, wow. you know, Mario and all of that. But when I got my hands on Legend of Zelda, that was it. For you were hooked. <laughs> it was That's game a, crack. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, absolutely. yeah, and I, I only bring it up because a lot of people, uh, especially people with as much gray hair as I have, <laughs> um, one have no clue how big this industry is, and and B um they don't know that the average age is you know between 35 and 40. yeah but my friends and i were actually just talking about this the other day that um when we think about it if we get put in homes we're gonna be uh just a bunch of old people playing, <laughs> you know <laughs> Oh, you camping new bitch, you, you rocket <laughs> bastard. Yeah. So they're gonna, <laughs> well, you know, old folks' homes, when you get there, they're going to have to have, have huge screens and multi uh, 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 controllers so uh, the crowds of old folks can play games together. Exactly. And now I got a VR headset. So I was like, all right, I'm going. Uh, I, oh, I can't I can't wait for the senior citizen VR clubs to to really start taking Walking around That's bumping into each other. Yeah, exactly. Goals. Yeah. Hashtag goals. I was trying to unlock that door. Why don't touch my stuff? <laughs> Where, why do they the kids never write? <laughs> You can have a virtual family now. All I'm right. just going to make my kids. There you, hey, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, you can make grandkids that'll never call you or write you. All right. On that note. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, this will be the uh, the official unofficial. We don't really have, we do things very chaotic here, hence the name. We don't have really an intro or anything. So we like to just kind of dive right in. Um, again, Dave, thank you so much for taking time out. We just have like a little, kind of a little list just so it, we don't totally derail. But um we we like to get the cliche question out of the way so what got you into acting what got you into show business uh i'd have to say my parents they wanted to 
uh, expose me, uh, not naked, but expose me to many things as a child, you know, kind of uh, helped me get an idea of what I was interested in. And one of those things growing up in Cleveland, there is a community arts center in uh, the Black neighborhood, Karamu House. It's still there. Um, and all your favorite Black actors on television and movies from Cleveland went through there. So um, as a kid, I was taking music, I was taking modern dance, I was uh, painting, doing sculpture, and acting. Uh, and, uh, oh, fencing too, as well. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of whetted my whistle. Uh, when I, in seventh grade, they sent me to a private boys school. I was the first black kid to go to this school. I uh, mean, a couple other guys in the same year. And uh, I don't want to tell you that year because it's a while older. <laughs> but uh, as I got into to high school, um, I got into the what they call the player society. No, not this player society, baby. How you doing? Right. But players like theater. And um, I was president of the player society for uh, my junior and senior year. And wrote some plays, directed some plays, acted in some plays, then went to college uh, for two years as a, a theater major before I quit and went on the road as a musician for a few years. And went back, finished up, anyway, enough of that history. But that's uh, basically how I got involved with acting. Uh, voiceover from that, uh, after I'd gotten married, had a kid, realized I wasn't growing up, grow up to be a rock and roll star after all. Um, I went into radio ostensibly to keep me close to music. And I was a morning jock in San Francisco at a couple of stations, KSOL and KDIA, um, and discovered voiceover uh, while I was doing that. Uh, even before I got on the air, I was writing commercials for a station. And I was friends with the morning guy, and he came out one day as I was arriving. Where are you going, man? Oh, I'm going over to the city to do some voiceover work. I make more money doing that than I do on the radio. And that's his exact quote from 19... <laughs> and um, it it never left me. You know, he gave me a five-minute spiel on what I have to do. You got to get your demo. You got to get an agent, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I didn't do anything about it for two or three years, but it was always there haunting me. Voiceover voiceover uh and after 10 years in san francisco and having a, a successful career on radio i was a morning jock uh my last job was morning jock and ksol which was neck and neck uh with another station as the number one station in town um i uh took a class with an agent from la she said you're really talented if you ever decide to uh, come to Los Angeles, we'd like to represent you. Three months later, the station fired all of us uh, to go in a new direction. Uh, and I, now what did I do with that lady's card? I know I got it here someplace. <laughs> uh, found her card, called her up. She said, yeah, come on down. So uh, I put together a new demo. Uh, that was in February, February 9th. I got fired. And uh, in May, I was commuting back and forth between San Francisco and Los Angeles, which I did for about eight months. It's crazy. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very, very crazy story. But that that kind of we were going to talk about this a little bit later, but you know, I figure we'll hit it now because you the the radio thing. Uh, we know you're a jazz guy. Yeah. So you're into jazz, right? You've, you've yeah. taken, you've had training and all that good stuff. So uh, jazz guy, but I, I also love R and B also love yep. rock. Right. I'm, I'm yep. down with anything, but most country Western, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the same way there. There are two different genres that I'm not super into, but I have a very, my dad was a drummer, hippie drummer back in the day. And I grew up around music my whole life. And yeah kind of recently got into jazz this is the part where we bore louis he's going to take a nap over there in the corner but uh, not at all yeah, we'll not talk all. you know uh, uh, family applications as well like, okay yeah, okay we're, we're good, hands. We're good. We're good hands. yeah I, I one of my favorite genres especially probably the last 10 years i would say is jazz fusion just because of yeah. all the things you get away with in jazz fusion 
Yeah. Uh, Chick Corea was one of my big oh, guys. Man. Al Demiola, guys like oh, that. All, yeah. He Al is probably my number one top guitar inspiration. I love yeah. that guy. So we we got to see. Thankfully, we got to see Chick before he died twice. Yeah. Once in St. Louis, Missouri, I got to put my feet under his uh, piano stool. We were that close. So Ooh. mind blowing, man. My, to me, to me, that level of musician, it's a whole nother planet. Like it's, I don't, I don't get flustered around people, but when you're that talented, it's scary how good some of those guys yeah, are. You know, I'll tell you a story. One of the reasons I'm not a musician anymore um, is, is because I went to Howard university when I went back to college in the jazz program and I was a pretty good guitar player. Um, I was a singer, songwriter, kind of started with a rock folky kind of thing and I had bands. And, uh, but when I went to Howard, um, I realized, oh, I'm pretty mediocre at this <laughs> <laughs> compared to, uh, the guys, uh, and gals that were, uh, in this program, some of the top musicians from around the world and, and usually not the names, you know. Uh, but the musicians who are backing up the names, you know, the musicians, uh, one of my very best friend, uh, uh, Wayne Lindsay, keyboard player. Well, he's, uh, he played with Whitney Houston, played with, uh, Mays, and Frankie Beverly, uh, tonight show band, American idol band. Uh, he, he I mean, he plays with everybody. Uh, he's a literate musician. He is a virtuoso. Uh, he can play any style uh, and and has been able to since he was about 13, 14 years old. And he's just one of the many. Another really good friend of mine, uh, uh, Manyungo Jackson, percussionist. Uh, well, now he plays with Stevie Wonder, but back in the day, he played with Miles Davis and a zillion jazz people. And these people, not... <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm playing this stuff and there, no, it is them. It is them. Uh, and I realized, you know what? Um, I need to find something that I am as good at uh, <laughs> right. as they are in this because right. clearly. <laughs> yep. There, there are so many underrated musicians, people you've never heard of that yeah. play yeah. in the background and all your favorite albums and you wouldn't even know who they you wouldn't know it. As a matter of fact, that's, that usually those are yeah. who. Yep. those musicians are mm -hmm. you know um, I've, I've always had those kinds of conversations with people and uh, aaron and i have even talked about this before way way back that it, we get kind of angry when people talk about that there, there's no good music anymore it's like well you're not looking for it. you're just listening right. to the radio the the three bop songs that are that are coming out you you have to you have to find it but you don't really even have to look that hard. It's it's yeah. on the surface. They're right, they're right there. And, Just go over there. <laughs> and, right. and honestly, a lot of the pop stars are amazing. There are, are some amazing are. pop yeah. stars. Yeah. Uh, I, I think sometimes um, we are so inundated. There's, there's so much uh, for us to have. And we are so uneducated as a culture in... Uh, music and arts. Th those are the first things that they pull out of schools yeah. uh, that sometimes we, we, we can't recognize this really true, great uh, artist uh, from this band that was put together by some producers and they're not really playing their instruments and they can't really sing that well, but we've got the auto tune and we get, but uh, there, there's some people out there that. Yeah. Amazing. That's one thing, you know, I have a very eclectic taste and I'm very, I'm kind of a, a music elitist when it comes to my taste and what I think is good and bad. And, you know, I try to, I try not to hurt people's feelings, but even if it's somebody I'm not really into, there are certain people that you have to recognize there is definite talent there. You, you know, know, I, I, even I, if you're I not it, into it. Yeah. I put it like, I'm, I'm not a, a big fan of classical music. There's some I like, uh, and I'll just throw out, um, Mozart. No one could de de uh, deny the quality of the. I'm not a big fan. Right. Uh, that says nothing about Mozart. Says my taste. Right. right. And I and I think uh, more often than not, we have to understand that just because we, you know, it's like uh, great food. You know, 
maybe you love fried chicken and the best fried chicken in the world is there and you're eating and you're loving it, but maybe you're not the person that loves it. And, and so you're not going to appreciate the best fried chicken in the world. Right. And that, that's another conversation I like having with people is um, <laughs> so, oh, oh, always, food. always food. Yeah. Yes. Just the past three days, I've yeah. seen some, uh, some people at work, some, um, some people that have left and then come back years later and, they uh they're going like wow what happened to you man like your arms are getting thinner your your guts getting bigger and it's like food Age. exists dude <laughs> yeah. yeah it's yeah. been two years shut up let me grow <laughs> yeah uh, exactly. but yeah, I, I always I always like talking about like like you know um figuring out your own tastes and figuring out like literally whether it comes to food or it comes to music whatever <laughs> there, there's so many different versions of what we perceive that sometimes your perception of it is going to be good sometimes it's going to be bad and that doesn't mean anything about the actual source it just means about what your flavor is yeah. and uh i, I did I, I work in um, homeless shelters <clears throat> and once when i was working with the kids uh, i was um, trying to get them to understand what uh, experience is and so what i did uh, and i'm very proud of this was I, I i got everybody to write down three songs and I chose one song from each one of the kids. They turned around. They weren't allowed to say anything, to do anything. They, they, they just write down whatever the song made them feel when I played the song. And then <clears throat> at the end of it, we all turned around. And then we talked about what we felt with every song that came on. And what it did was it showed them that we all experienced the exact same moment, the exact same thing, but we all had a different perception. Yeah. And it started to make them a little more understanding of one another and a little bit easier to go, oh, OK, well, just because I went through something doesn't mean that it's going to affect you the same way. Yeah. And, and it really helped out with a few kids because they were having some trouble um, mingling <laughs> correctly because yeah. they, they, there was a lot of fights then. Well, it, you know, uh, it's, it's a fine line. And I mean, we were talking about food and music, but um, on one hand, we want to get to know ourselves and the things that uh, do touch our heads and our hearts that we like. And at the same time, we need to leave ourselves a little bit open for some new experience uh, that we may learn to love uh, and like, and yet not constantly just be looking for something different. You know, it, how am I grounded? And yet I'm allowing myself to float a little bit and, and have more experience. It's a, uh, it's the human experience. It, it really is. Yep. Not, not to get too meta, but no, that, I 100% agree. It's, I think a lot of people have trouble finding that fine line between accepting what everyone thinks you should like and liking stuff to fit in and really finding things yeah. that resonate with you. Because that's that's art in general. That's the beauty of art. It's 1000% yeah. You know, subjective. You, everyone has a different experience. Everybody could look at the same painting, feel something completely different, listen yeah. to a piece of music, totally different. And, and you can think something. Well, well why is that art? Well, mm -hmm. right. Um, because somebody right. created it and had a vision. Right. It right. may not be for you, uh, but you know, for somebody else, I, you know, I, I collect African art and uh, I, I, I love it. And it's for me. It makes me feel good. Um, and, uh, but you know, it's not for everybody. Right. Right. I like art. Yep. <laughs> that out yeah. <laughs> Louis, like, Louis likes the pictures in all the books. That's all. Like the we'll pictures. Pictures. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. I'm the same way though. I'm very illiterate. I just like the pictures, but Lisa Frank it was is. astounding. <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> yeah. Um, Whoa, got my own chair. <laughs> it broke my own chair. Nah, we're good. Um, so yeah that you know with the the voiceover thing you know we I, louis and i love voice actors we actually know a few um one thing that i've noticed in the community i've had conversations i talked to townsend coleman ah, uh, quite a we're bit both from cleveland yeah uh, yes yeah 100 wait, which wait. which we'll get to later because okay. i'm in ann arbor michigan so let's leave that to the end of the conversation, okay. the, the Ohio right. Michigan thing. And then we'll, we'll get to that. And then we can not be friends after that, but let's pretend we're friends for right now. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, interview over right now we're done, but uh, oh, good no, that that's one art form that we really appreciate because, you know, number one, you get to literally be any character you want, but, but also 
the community that is kind of the voiceover community seems to be one of the most helping, inviting groups of people out there, especially in show business, which is super rare. And it's still, you know, obviously we know it's a very not dog eat dog, but you have to audition for every part you get, you know, it's very, there's a lot of people in the pot, but you know, one thing that, that we've seen and that, you know, I've, I've actually watched some of your podcasts to ask Dave Fenoy anything. Uh, I just watched the, the last one with Tara Langella, which was awesome. Love it. And just, you know, doing classes, things like that, you know, to me, that is one of the coolest things about the, the, I guess you could say, quote unquote, voice acting community is how helpful they are, how willing you are to give your expertise and your experiences in the craft to other people, you know, so, so givingly, what, what is that kind of like for you? And what, what do you enjoy about that kind of aspect of, of well, you know, part of it is uh, just trying to be the person uh, like the people who helped me. Um, I, I think of the late great Don LaFontaine, who was the best of us all in terms of uh, working more than anybody. He was the, he was the trailer voice you heard all the time mm -hmm. in a world. Uh, <laughs> so great, he became a parody of himself and played himself on TV commercials mm -hmm. uh, doing that. It's just iconic. Right. Uh, but this was a guy, uh, when I first came to LA, he was going from job to job in a limousine, not because he was so hard for Luton, but he had so much work. Uh, it, he couldn't have found parking spaces. And <laughs> so get in there, knock it on out, get out onto the next gig. But he would take people on trips in that limousine to show them the ropes. Uh, I, I never took one of those trips, but uh, we became very good friends. Uh, I was with him three days before he died at his house, just kicking it because by that time, home studios had become a thing and we didn't run into each other in the studios much anymore. Um, but that's the kind of example that so many people have set. Um, I, when I first came to town, I, had a, I was one of the voices of the Disney Channel before they went all kids. And uh, 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 several of the, the, the guys that were there, uh, Stephen Bishop uh, was the main voice. He could have been threatened by, oh, who's this new guy they're bringing in? Welcome me with open arms. Hey, come on over to the house. Uh, and this has been the way it has been. Uh, there, there are a few people that don't live up, but they are exceptions to the rule. Uh, so, so yeah, you, your, your perception of the voiceover community is correct. Very I mean, we, we've like, we've seen a lot of um, like the uh, twisted tune and things like that when it, it's more, it's so organic seeing all of you guys in the same room at the same time, just, you can feel the camaraderie and the friendship. It doesn't feel like they're like, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the Muppets <laughs> where one of them is going to try to outshine the other for a moment, but they are bouncing off one another. And so it's important to understand that dynamic. And it's a certain kind of dichotomy with all of you guys. And it, it, it's, it's so warming and it's so, it, it, it's wholesome. And at the same time, it is also like that, that little edge of competitiveness that gives you the right to be in the room with all of them. Well, you know, I think everybody knows you're going to get what's yours. Um, so, but there's also uh, an instant camaraderie. Uh, you know, I have met voiceover people that I've heard for years, but didn't really know. Uh, maybe they were in New York or Chicago or something. But when you meet, um, there's an instant camaraderie. It's, it's, it's like meeting an old friend because you know what that other person went through and is going through. Uh, you, you know that they got the same battle scars you've got and that you have to give them respect because they're doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you end up with a lot of Insta friends that become real friends that uh, you, you just realize you have so much in common. Uh, and you respect people for their uniqueness. Uh, 
you know, when people are learning to do voiceover so often they're, they're, they're trying to imitate Adama Fontaine or some people try to imitate me. Um, but ultimately the thing that is going to work for you is being you is whatever is unique about the way you speak about the tone uh, and texture of your voice, uh, how you see the world. That's the thing that is going to set you apart. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, I want to, I want to go do this now. Right. <laughs> Good job. Let's go. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I would consider myself an aspiring voice actor, but there's nothing out here in Texas. But the fun thing is uh, I have a few friends here where I live in El Paso that are doing voice acting for certain projects here and there. Uh, one of my friends is a, um, she's working with different anime that come out. Yeah. So it, it got so strange to me that uh it was surreal i should say not strange that it went from almost an impossibility if you're not out there in hollywood that now it, it can be real but like what you're saying you have to put in the work you have to put in the yeah. time you have to give it like treat it with the respect that it absolutely deserves because it's not just oh you got a great voice go and do it you yeah. you there, there's so much to it and I, I i i'm now i'm thinking about what you're what you're telling me and i can I feel like I can see that, but I never noticed it until you said it, that when the people get in that room at the same time, it's like, oh, that's why like they immediately embrace. It's it's immediate. And it's like they've never even met before. Are you serious? <laughs> they look like old high school friends, man. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but wow, that, that's wow. Oof. And and it does take uh, some time to uh, like with anything else. Um, very few people have uh well i'm gonna do this today and they're doing it tomorrow uh, it usually takes a number of years um to to really find yourself uh and as with anything else you, you're watching a great athlete say a tennis player and and you know it just looks so easy well i'm just stroking that ball uh great musician oh they're just you know uh so easy it's just they're just feeling it. Well, it took years for those people to get there. And it takes years for you to learn how to, what I call a translating um, uh, uh, the written word into the spoken word. You know, writers write however beautifully they write. Uh, once we're supposed to hear it, now you need somebody who's going to give their head and their heart to it. Uh, so, so those words will touch your head and your heart and you can't just do it because you read the word words correctly. You have to have some thought and feeling about it and let it come through your own unique way of speaking. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely feel that. And, you know, I, Louie and I both being in kind of the same age bracket. I'm not, I'm going to, again, I'm going to, you know, I'm uh, for, <laughs> that's how old I am, but uh, you know, so that, you know, our generation being with video games and just, you know, high quality animation since the eighties, nineties, all that to me, you know, a, a cool video game or a, a great cartoon show can be good. If the animation's really good. I love animation. I've drawn since I was a little kid, you know, both, both kind of sides of that coin I've been into because of, you know, people like you and just growing up in that, that generational, you know, kind of cosmos. But to me, a voice actor can bring something to a mediocre project that can push it over the top. Whereas, you know, really good animation with bad voices, probably not going to reach you as much. And I, and that's as a, you know, an artistic, I love animation. Like I said, I've drawn since I was a kid to me, I would rather have those heartfelt performances that's why i love you know voice actors and voice acting i've grown up you know i people say i have parotitis where i hear somebody and i'll start to mimic them or do <laughs> you know when we're when we're playing video games in chats i'll be doing goofy voices and i would love to do you know make something of that but because of that to me that reaches you a little more than just a aesthetically pleasing experience the performance really can take it over the top and something that might have otherwise been just okay it can really push it to that next level yeah. to me, you know, that, yeah. Yeah. So it's very, you know, very, very cool thing to be involved in. And that kind of, I guess, leads us into another kind of question we had. So 
just acting in general, it can be animation, it can be games, it can be actual live performance. What to you has been your favorite project you've worked on? And it could be just the the outside circumstances, maybe a time in your life. It could be in the people. Well, you involved. know, uh, the, the top of that answer is, well, that's like trying to choose between my children. <laughs> um, but I, I, I have to say the Walking Dead game. Have you killed one? No, but they get shot a lot. You've been all by yourself through this? Yeah. I want my parents to come home now. I think that might be a little while, you know? Oh. Look, I don't know what happened, but I'll look after you until then. And it, it's it's becoming an old answer now mm -hmm. uh, because we're going back to 2013. Uh, but because uh, it was one of the first projects that uh, was so on the nose as storytelling. Uh, that allowed me to just use my voice. I didn't have to go big in character. -y. I wasn't evil villain. I wasn't superhero guy. I, it, I was a guy like me in uh, circumstances uh, that he had to overcome. And uh, I'm a father. So I related to the idea of this man trying to take care of this little eight-year-old girl. Uh, the story was so good. I remember in the first 20 minutes of recording, I thought, wow, this is a really good script. I'm, I'm really happy I'm doing this. Uh, at the time, I had no idea how good it really was because, you know, in voiceover with video games, it's always you by yourself. Well, okay, maybe once or twice you're in an ensemble. But in the 30 years I've been doing this, it's been like three, four times there was an ensemble for video game. Um, but when I started to see the finished work, when I started to hear the performances of the other actors um, and, and the animation that went along, everything just fit together so well. The stars, oh, right behind me. The stars aligned. Um, it was the perfect, uh, the Walking Dead TV show was just hitting its stride. Uh, the video game, uh, the, the, the acting, the writing uh, hit its stride. We won 100 Game of the Year awards. I was nominated as best performance in a video game uh, uh, several times, won a few. Uh, got to go to London for the BAFTA. I was nominated for a BAFTA, British uh, nice. Academy of Film and Television Arts. Didn't win some limey, got it. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> but I understand the actors when they've been nominated for um, an award that it's an honor just to be nominated. So um, the Walking Dead game playing Lee Everett gave me a lot of gifts um, that I hadn't had. And uh, but since then, just it's a lot of great characters. I've, I've really had the opportunity to play a lot of great characters. And but uh, that one. That'll always be the footnote of uh, my fave. If, if I may, um, very quickly, I mean, uh, the caveat to the question was supposed to be like an overall experience, what it was, and you answered it, it complete and full. But that does, does bring up a question that I would like to ask you as a voice actor. Um, <clears throat> like I, I've heard many people, like, like what you were saying earlier, um, specifically in voice acting that when the, you get to be, be all these characters, you get to create all these wonderful different things and all of that. But what I have kind of seen is the performances that most people kind of regard as not necessarily their favorite, like you said, it's choosing between your kids, but the ones that they always feel the most connection to is the one where they're not creating a character necessarily. I mean, they are, you're acting, you're not actually in zombie land, but you, you are playing m more closely to the heart. And so I, I'm just kind of, I, I guess the question I'm trying to come up with on the spot is, is, is it more because you were able to bring so much from your own personal experience? Yeah, there's an honesty uh, and a closeness to, you know, my actual heart and soul uh, that came out of that character that more often than not, you you don't get to bring. 
uh, this was a character that was so close to my own uh, core of being uh, that you just don't generally uh, get to play that. Uh, just there it is. Just open your mouth and say it like you're, you know, and just say it and and, and there it is. Uh, and, you know, the, the theme of uh, the Walking Dead game with Lee Everett uh, was redemption. Here was a man that did, it was a college professor, found his wife cheating, killed her, the wife and her lover, off to jail uh, for murder, thinks his life is over, ashamed of him, himself, and uh, just in the depths of despair. And this zombie apocalypse frees him. Uh, and he, in his escaping zombies, uh, discovers this eight-year-old girl in a treehouse whose parents had been out of town when the apocalypse happened and uh, takes it upon himself to take care of her. And I don't know that the character at the time is thinking, I'm oh, I'm, I'm going to redeem myself by doing this wonderful deed. Uh, I think it's more organic than that. Uh, I think... It, he was a good man who did something wrong. Um, and we all know emotions, uh, you know, it's that, that person you love, uh, crime of passion. But he felt terrible about it. He, this, this was his opportunity to do something good. And he made it uh, his, his goal. Uh, and, you know, in my life, I've done some things that I regret, never killing anybody. Uh, but I think we've all broken a heart or two or uh, let somebody down in some way uh, that that if we had it to do over again, we'd, we'd want to do it a different way. I, I haven't met anybody yet that hasn't uh, spoken a, a harsh word that they didn't mean, uh, that they wish they could take back. But I related to that and I related to the idea of I, I'm a father, I have a daughter. Uh, and now you know, the, with my wife, we have three daughters. I have uh, one biological and, and, and two from her. So I, I, I related. Right. Um, <clears throat> was it hard? Because I mean, that, that game was so, so intense. <laughs> was it hard as a player? I, I found myself having to put down the controller taking a breather for God's sake. And then like, just kind of pacing around going, Oh my God, oh my God. What, what is it like for your experience uh, cultivating and bringing that scene? Those you know, I, and I, I almost hate to say this, but it was easy <laughs> playing this character uh, because I, I, it, it was so me. Uh the, the difference, you know, I've never killed anybody uh, and, and felt that I had to hide that much of myself. But that probably was, and I've never had to, you know, fight off zombies or anything like that, but, <laughs> but, but that was the difference. It was me in a heightened, uh, more dangerous situation where the stakes were much higher. <laughs> um, so in, in that way, I, you know, I, I hate to say, oh yeah, this was an easy job. Um, technically, really easy. I wasn't ha didn't have to worry about my voice. I wasn't putting on an accent of any kind. It was just me uh, it, being this character, thinking what this character is thinking, feeling what this character is thinking. Right. So you know, I, I, I it, it's interesting because uh, when I talk with my students. Um, one of the things that I tell them is once they tune into being the character, stop worrying about the words. They got to be said. But what you're really playing is this character's reality, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they're doing, what their relationships are. Once you stop worrying about, oh, how do I say the words? Stop trying to add a song to them. You know, say them in such a way that people <laughs> right. think you're feeling this way. You know, uh, once you let go of that and are just the character it does feel easy. It feels like you're cheating. <laughs> um, and, but once again, I'll go back to the great musicians, the great athletes. Looks like it's easy. 
Right. Yeah. Yep. It's the effort you put in for sure. And I think every actor is kind of different how they approach things probably sure. because I think L Louis was kind of touching on that too. You know, that kind of role where there's a lot of trauma, a lot of crazy things happening, you know, how much of a detox do you have to do after that experience? Or is there any, is it just so you're able to give of yourself and, and it's such an enjoyable experience that you don't feel it as, you know, you don't feel that as much or you do a little bit and you just have, you're so pro at it. Really kind of, okay, that was a role. We're done. No zombies, no having to, you know, worry about redeeming myself from murder. You know, what's kind of the thought process there? I, I, I think uh, as a voice actor in a studio with a microphone and words in front of you, it's a lot easier to detox from it than if you are in costume working with other actors and you're seeing these zombies that you're, um, I, I, I think that is going to affect your psyche more uh, when you're spending more time uh, in character, um, uh, doing those things, not just uh, pantomiming the 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 motion and letting the letting it come through you, but really having to do the full motion and uh, you're you're running, you're jumping, you're hitting, you're. Um, I, I think that gets deeper in your soul and sometimes you have to detox from that. That said, uh, recording the goodbye between Lee Everett and Clementine. Keep that hair short. I will. I'll cut it myself. Great. Good. And also... I'm an actor. I know how to fake cry. <laughs> Clementine. Was, uh, but when I went to the studio that day and we started the scene, those tears were real. I was crying. Now, I'm a professional enough that I, I didn't stop. I didn't know oh, I'm going to need a minute. No, I said, oh, you know, there's a part of me like, oh, use this. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and yeah. and that's and they also filmed it so somewhere out there in the the metaverse uh you can see a video of of me crying in that scene uh but that was real and i i think that's kind of what you're talking about um it all kind of welled up in that moment of who this character was and what this meant uh, I'd been with the character for, uh, you know, about eight or nine months. Uh, and it, it got me, it got me. It, it, it got us, the audience. I promise you. That. Did you cry? I, <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm a little teary right now. I'm just thinking about it. Like, oh my God, I remember that. Um, and I did my <laughs> job. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. exactly. And not to mention get, getting like a behind the scenes look at it. I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like I, I'm yeah, totally yeah. fanning out right now. But yeah. um, and, like, and I, I tell you, um, every actor, all your favorite actors have done some dogs as well as some things that you love. I've done some dogs and, and hopefully a lot of things that you've loved. Yeah. Uh, and I'm continuing to pray for look for hope for another lee everett type character I've, I've had a lot of good characters in between don't get me wrong uh but one that touches uh the gaming community in the same way and touches me in the same way i, I still hear a lot of people talking about like 
I'm not a telltale guy. I don't like the telltale games, but the walking <laughs> dead, as you said, that story was just, I mean, you, you sometimes you hear people talk about like, Oh, we had no idea the script, the, the, it was going to get this big. Sometimes you get a script that you have to know. There's no way you didn't read it and just go, Oh, this is going to be something else. Yeah. Well, like I said, first 20 minutes, I was like, Ooh, this yeah. is really good. Yeah, this is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it went beyond my expectations right. in terms of popularity, and it's still popular. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, they just released uh, earlier this year. Um, uh, uh, oh, uh, it was like a collector's a thing. collector's yeah, edition, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And there's a uh, statue of Clementine and a statue of Lee Everett. I started to say statue of me. The statue of, <laughs> of, of Lee Everett. And it, and it, let's be honest, it's you. It's, it's you. you. It's you. Come on. Yeah. But, uh, they're available. Um, and uh, they said they're sending me one. I haven't gotten it yet. Right, well, well, we'll make we'll make sure that we'll we'll, no. we'll get in touch with somebody after the show. Aaron's gonna write one of his uh, famous tweets. The yeah, I, will. I I get things done when I complain on Twitter. It happens. Yeah, just it happens. so it doesn't show up in the uh, January six committee. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yep. No, that's that's very cool. Because I to me when I when I you know we're both you know pretty good hardcore gamers. Um, I'm more about the gameplay experience over story typically in my games, mm -hmm. but I love the telltale games because that's when I can get into a story. Like I've always been, you know, since I was a kid, I've always liked, you know, I, I call them point and click games where it's completely, you're just kind of moving the character around and trying to find things, but it's more about the story to me, those, because, the, you know, you were Lucius Fox in the Batman games and, you know, you have a history with telltale. To me, that's the fun experience where you can just dive right into the story. As a as a gamer, it's more on the kind of an interactive movie side, and that you know I appreciate yeah. that. And when you have it, and I'm sure it's fun for you. It's more about the performance than you know 80 million grunts when you fall off a ledge or get hit by a bullet <laughs> or whatever. You're actually able to act from you know use yeah. a script, give of yourself. It's probably a little more. It's fun a little more satisfying. Um... But you know, all of it's satisfying. You know, some some experiences are going to be uh, better than others. I really love it when I get to play a character that you know has an actual arc and is not just uh, stereotypical. Um, and fortunately, I have been able to play uh, quite a few of those characters. But uh, sometimes when you're playing that stereotypical uh, warrior, wizard, monster, whatever it is. Um, that's still fun too. I, I, I really do enjoy it all. That's awesome. That actually kind of leads me into another point. So, you know, again, you talked about like the age bracket of gamers and everything. Do you ever play and try to play anything or watch animated stuff that you're in or have, you, you know, know their I, family that are really into it or do, you know, how does that you go know, in your household? Um, I'm not a gamer. I'm not a gamer. I'm an actor that loves, uh, I love the business. I know a lot about uh, the video game business, but it's from the perspective of being an actor in a lot of video games and having an appreciation for this industry that's given me so much. Um, I, uh, a few years ago, I bought a PS4 and set it up and, uh, and, and, but I suck at it. <laughs> I, I, I just hey, you know yeah that's that's the thing i mean louie and i were probably born with controllers in our hand we're from that generation so yeah, i you know from much. from atari nes onward we you know we're i think it's just you know kind of what you uh, like anything it's what yeah, you grew I, up on, when, but... when i was coming along and it wasn't as a kid it was as an adult uh when pong and asteroids and uh whatnot came along and i i did some of that um but then i married had a kid you know life uh sorry uh you're an adult now you can't do that well right. life has changed uh a lot now I, and video games are a part of your lives in a way that they could not have been uh in my life it's a uh, lexicon now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, <clears throat> it, and, and, you know, most people my age don't understand it, have no clue how big a business this is. It's bigger than movies and music combined. 
Mm -hmm. There's yeah. never been a yeah, movie that made a billion dollars in a day. There have been yeah. a bunch of games that have. Yep. It's, it's an international business, uh, much like music and 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 uh, movies. Um, games are conceived in one continent, uh, technically <clears throat> handled in another continent, and then voiced by people from all over the world. Um, yep, it ain't yeah. going away. No, it's a hundred percent. And I think you know part of that is kind of the testament to the time period that we all kind of grew up in with act, you know, actors like you and, you know, the countless other voice actors making those things so much fun, even though, you know, they, you watch documentaries now and it's a big joke, you know, everything was a toy commercial eighties or nineties or whatever, but it hits, it hits deeper than that because it was such good toy commercials. Yeah. People got attached people. You know, I still, if you walk outside my office right now, I have my entire basement is shelves of transformers and, and gundams you're and, not the only yeah one. oh no we joke all the <laughs> our, our running joke is how broke am i gonna go or how 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 much money is the yeah. wife gonna let me spend this month on you know toy stuff because it's it's <laughs> not just trying to relive the past it was just that good things were that good and the voice actors and people involved made it so much fun it's such a fun memory even if you know even if your childhood was garbage or you went through a lot of bad things or were poor or whatever you know it doesn't matter what your background was there was so much good stuff there that you want to keep going with that you know i i tell people i i never thought the 80s or 90s was uncool i just kept going because i knew i'm still going to be into this when i'm you know 40 50 as long as i can you know until they drag me away and say you know you've gone senile you got to stop playing with your giant robots it, it's so much fun that you know to me it kind of is an enduring thing yeah i i can't tell you how many friends i have uh voiceover guys uh now i'm a voiceover guy i'm mostly known for video games i do it all but i'm mostly yeah. known for video games and friends of mine uh who maybe are uh 10 years younger than i am or maybe sometimes <laughs> <laughs> and if we're doing a Zoom thing, if I'm doing an Ask Dave Fenoy with them, uh, what you're talking about with your toys, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, that behind it, well, that's my DC stuff, and that's my Star Wars stuff, and that's my Star Trek stuff over there, and I keep that separated from um, col collectibles of, uh, I was going to say dolls, but no, action <laughs> figures right. uh, is, is huge uh, with guys who play games. And, and half the game gamers now are women. Mm -hmm. um, they have collections too, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm most impressed by the guys' collections of action figures uh, that they keep very, oh no, that's, this right. world here and that's this world here and that's right. this world here yeah the, the proper nomenclature is a posable statue right yeah exactly posable that's, statue. Yeah, that's it no and, and it's it's 100 percent the meme especially especially in the holiday season i'm seeing all these memes of you know the when the cashier asks or tells you yeah your son's gonna love that toy and you're like yeah my son i don't have any oh, that, kids no that's <laughs> for yeah, me it's for me yeah it's a, i this i is have, a posable right yeah statue. exactly no it's i tell toy. yeah i tell them no it's a toy and it's not gonna make it's gonna literally come out of the box on my way home i'm gonna no. try to not get into a car accident while i'm playing with it so i i tell you what i do i have a seven-year-old grandson and i buy him posable uh <laughs> figures or action figures or yeah. uh i buy him those things but i haven't given them to him yet <laughs> yeah. uh, or, and sometimes i'll buy two one that i keep and one that i send to him because yeah. i want to keep it so until he gets of an age where he understands don't take this right out of the out box of, right yeah. right uh this this will have value this could pay yes, for your yeah. college education yes. in a few years 100 uh, i i foolishly opened a uh original first edition spawn posable statue oh that oh, I, yeah. yeah totally ruined it uh, yep the I, mcfarland I stuff man the mcfarland stuff you don't oh you don't God. touch you don't touch but, it and, and this was one of those ones where like the like you they gave me the choice they said you can get the box with all of the um like the stickers and everything all yeah. over it but you can get the one that's clear and i was like well give me the clear one it sounds cooler 
and immediately just opened it up and I opened it in the store and the guy, it was a comic, one of the only comic book stores we had back in the early nineties here in, in El Paso. And the, you could just see his, <laughs> his, <laughs> piece of his yeah. soul just left. And even my mom was like, why did you do that? Like, yeah. it's a toy. <laughs> Don't get a 14 year old ADHD. <laughs> right. Exactly. It was a bad idea. Mom. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't take credit for that. That's her fault. Yeah, yeah exactly. She should have stopped you, right? She should have. She should have grabbed your hand and said no. Tackled you, right? Exactly. Right. At least he should. He exactly. should have said like, "Okay, the reason why, yeah, is yeah. the collector's yeah. item. Don't, yeah, don't, yeah, o- don't open it, kid." Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. yeah the no. Simpsons. You need the Simpsons comic book store guy. Like, listen, little boy, you yeah. can't open that in the <laughs> store. It's illegal. <laughs> Yeah, they make fun of those guys, but they're the ones that, who are going to... They're going to they're gonna be away. billionaires in the next probably 10, 20 years, honestly. And, and, you know, that's one of the funny things about life we see. Uh, remember when nerds were just nerds? Yeah. Nerds rule the world now. Yep, they do. <laughs> they do. And it, I think a, a big part of that is it's okay to be nerdy. So people, you know, jocks, people from all over, we all have a little bit of everything in us. You know, humans are not one certain type of person. Now it's just cool to admit that, you know what, I've been into com. you know, I, I I tell people now, like, Hey, I've loved Iron Man since I was five years old when my grandma first bought me, you know, a Marvel secret war Iron Man that again, I don't have, and probably is worth thousands now, but (sighs) that got me into it. And, you know, I might look like a stable adult, but I'm a I'm a dork. But, so, but you know, hey. oh, you are a stable adult, right, and, right. and in your generation, this is who you know a right. vast number of you are. Right. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I, I remember having to explain to my mom. Um, this was, I want to say, right at the beginning of the 2010s, and I was like, "Yeah, no, that's all good, mom. I'm a nerd." And she's just like, "You're not a nerd, Louis. Okay." <laughs> It's because not she, a bad word she, anymore. Nerd, oh, she right. wants her son to be sexy and right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. By yeah. Yeah. No, you're you're right. Bouncing, no, you're he, he's, security he, work. He, like, he's, he's told ass. he's told us the story before. You know, no, you're a strong let, Latino man. You know, like, yeah. no, mom, I'm a dork. I'm sorry, I hate to, I hate to break I'm it. I'm a to nerd. You. I'm a nerdy nerd. Yeah. Nerd. Guess I'm what? Go play Magic Gathering. You, you can, can be, be both a nerd and a manly right. man. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Look at exactly. the two are not mutually exclusive. Right. Henry Cavill, Jason Moa, uh, what's his name? The guy that played a uh, Deathstroke. All the, yeah, yeah. And we right. giant. Exactly. Oh yeah. He and he. Yeah. Uh. Oh man. Yeah. You just D players. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Some of them are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're 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 the toughest dudes you know, but they're they're super into the geeky stuff. So it's That's right. it's super That's cool. Right. I love it. I love it, man. Yeah, I'm all about it. <laughs> it's okay, mom. I'm all yeah. right. I it's okay. You. Yeah, this this is Louis' rege- redemption. This episode <laughs> right now, we can send it to his mom. <laughs> got the stamp of approval. So, yay! Cool. <laughs> well, we don't want to take up too much more of your time, but we have what we think is the most important part of the whole segment. We got to yep. ask the tough Uh-oh. questions. This is where it gets real. Uh oh. This is the I like to call it the James Lipton Actor Studio. This is where we find out who Dave Fenoy really is deep down. Well, so we're going to ask you, you don't you don't have a James Lipton voice for me? No, I, I, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I could do the uh, the Will Ferrell version, but it'd be British and he would get offended if he was still well, here. He's so, out here. Yeah, but not yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to kind of rapid fire. We got a we got a few good ones that we think kind of apply to you, but we'll start off with the, the biggest one that has started the most fights in our friends group. So. Your choice in flooring in a house. We're not talking about like bathrooms or kitchens or where there's food or water, but your favorite kind of surface. Do you prefer hardwood or carpet? Hardwood. Okay. Of course. Ouch. That hurt. <laughs> okay. First question that hurts. But anyway, uh, okay. If you ha- could have any animal as a pet, and we're talking beyond Mike Tyson, not tigers, not nothing. And we're talking like it could be fantasy creatures, could be creatures that are heavily illegal if you could have any animal as a pet you know as crazy as it can be what what would it be well i have pit bulls but if i could have anything uh elephants okay awesome awesome nice. all right this is another one that has started fist fights over the internet if that could be a thing so best ultimate pasta shape what's the best kind of pasta you know long and thin okay all right we'll, we'll leave that be 
Okay, then you know what? Hey, Louis Ash Ash finally got his redemption arc also during this episode. He did. He did. Okay. Yeah, we all make fun of him, but you know what? It's okay. Uh, so your top two cereal choices. What are your two favorite cereals of all time? Oh boy, um, uh, uh, Raisin Bran and uh, Rice Krispies. All right, those those are two awesome. good ones. Very good. Um, I'm gonna mix Although it up. I'm not eating Kellogg's products right now. Okay, well, again, again, <laughs> solidarity I'm in, with the workers. Hey, man, you know, I, we're Absolutely. in, yeah, we're in Michigan. My last concert before COVID was in Battle Creek, Michigan. So we, I, I won't even go there. But, um, so I'm gonna throw one in there that's not on the list. Uh, so Desert Island album. As a musician, as a music guy, what's the one album you can take and that's it for the rest of your life? You're stranded. Uh, no hope. Al Dimiola, My World Beyond would be one. Amazing choice. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, Electric. Uh, oh, God, which one was it? Uh, Ladyland? Uh, uh, yeah. Or Are You Experienced, maybe? One of, any, any Hendrix, uh, really. I mean, um, Are You Experienced would work. Yeah. Um, uh one nation under groove is a song F parliament funkadelic yep uh anatomic dog okay and, and flashlight all right um yeah. okay that's a that's a good list my you know mine honestly it would be either return to forever romantic warrior or al Demiola, elegant yeah. gypsy those are i'd have to fight over the two but that's uh, very good very good choices um and then the final one i think that's pretty apropos so if you could pick one superpower what would it be wow now that one's tough because i've thought about that one a lot would it be reading minds but i'm not sure i want to know what other people are, are, are yeah, thinking i know, uh, I know. uh yeah. invisibility would be cool um I, I i'd love to be able to do that or fly yeah those i think those are the two biggest invisibility and flight are the two but again, and to me, invisibility kind of goes into the mind reading thing. Do you really want to be creeping around where other people are up to no good and they think nobody's watching? I mean, but yeah, I, but there's, there's, yeah, you may, you don't necessarily have to do that. But if, but if you can read minds, you know, right. Oh yeah. No, I, I don't even like being in my own head, let alone reading other people's <laughs> minds. So that, that would be a no, no, for sure. A lot of the time I have to remind myself, just shut up. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Like don't, don't think that. that's yeah, weird. And you know, it's interesting because you think about the number of thoughts that go by in your brain. And uh, I, I've I've learned that just because a thought goes through there, you don't have to grab hold of it and, and right, accept right. it. And I think right. if enough people go, you know what? Oh, no, that was a terrible thought. Let me just right. let that go. Um, I know when we're thinking about uh, racism and sexism and all the isms uh, that when we want to be our higher selves, right. but we've been, all been poisoned with this shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And sometimes a thought goes through and you just, you know, wow, why am I having that thought? Well, you can let it go. Right, right. You, you yeah. don't have to grab hold of it. Yes. Yep. Yeah, 100%. I mean, again, as human beings, we all have all kinds of thoughts. I think a lot of people, that's the problem. They have, they don't have that disconnect where they can say, that was weird. And yeah, I thought that, but I'm not going to do anything with that. And I'm going to throw it in the trash yeah. bin, like yeah. right away. That's, yeah. that's not right. You know, yeah. One way, one way that I tell some of my clients who are having a little bit of difficulty trying to convey what it is that they're feeling, I always say, if your thought connects to your, um, to your heart, that's a decent way of thinking. This is something I feel. This is something I, I can say, but it doesn't necessarily always mean that it's good or bad. It just means it's something worth talking about. And if you're yeah. not comfortable with that, bring it to somebody you do trust, who you know isn't going to judge you, that you can talk it out with. Yeah. Because sometimes your yeah, sometimes your idea isn't a good one. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Again, Most of mine hit the cutting room floor. That. So yeah. Oh yeah. There's just, there's just wafting yeah. through yeah. puddles yeah. of thoughts that are just like that, that's that, dumb. That's stupid. That but well, maybe that, no, that was yeah. dumb too. That's the best part of being married is you have a built-in editor in your household. You say, Hey babe, what do you think about this? And she's like, Yeah, no, that's real dumb and you're an idiot. And I'm like, Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> that is exactly that's what why I thought. I love you, honey. Just yeah, I just I I knew that already, but I just wanted to make sure. And that's that's one of the best reasons to get married because you you have someone that will uh, keep your ego in check. Yes. yes. At all times. Yes. Is that why I have a massive ego? Yes, oh, it so. is. It is. Louis. <laughs> no, it's all right. But you have your oh. mom. Your mom's the next best, best thing. So my mom thinks I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> she thinks I'm a handsome boy. Yeah, but she doesn't think you're a nerd. 
Right, exactly. That's true. She's That's still true. she's still coming to terms with that. She doesn't know she, the true nerdy geeky you. Yeah. No, she she's accepted it now. It took yeah, about right. ten years, but it, she That's was like, good. okay, <laughs> fine. That's <laughs> good. That's good. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you so much, Dave, for giving us your precious time. And well, uh, you know what? You I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Thank you. Uh, this was a fun interview because it what wasn't just about you know, voiceover and stuff. We hit some things that uh, I think in the long run are more important to humanity. Um, and uh, that's always a good thing. And uh, it's nice to be appreciated. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, and, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, that that's kind of our goal with this whole thing is we're talking to people that we really admire for a certain craft, but we want to get to know you as a person. What makes you take? What are you oh, into? I hope, I hope I haven't let you down. No, you haven't at all. It's been, <laughs> it's been even, all, co- we already all. knew you were awesome, but now you're just that much more next level. So, <laughs> oh, so, man. Stuff, I, 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 I have to tell you, like, as, again, as an aspiring actor, writer, blah, 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 blah. Um, a, a lot of what you said uh, put a lot of new found inspiration into me just today, just in this past hour. I really, really appreciate that. And I hope that this conversation for other people that listen to it with the same kind of um, aspirations, I hope that they get some kind of fulfillment out of that as well. And so thank you for your time. I, I it, it really, really touched my soul. Thank you so oh, much. My pleasure, my pleasure. All right, awesome. Thank and you guys, I, I'm honored to be asked. No, no problem. And thank you so much and come back anytime if you got a spare minute or two. I'm sure we'll find other things to talk about. But in the meantime, we will post all your socials, all your stuff, your your podcast. Which you um, already have because you've been stalking me. That's right, I have been, 100%. It's it's called <laughs> research in the stalking community. Oh, yeah. that's, oh, yeah. how we, that's how we legally get away with it. Whether, whenever the cops are called, like, I was doing research, obviously. It's a research, no, I... Yeah, yeah. But, Ethics uh, are important for this reason. Yes, it, 100%, 100%. <laughs> we know all the loopholes in, in red tape. But um, it, is there anything else coming up that you're, I, we know the, you know, Oh God! This you, you know, the snipers, you don't, we don't want any red dots floating around, but can, is there anything coming up that you're they're, excited they're about? Basically, or? I cannot talk about um, anything. Okay. I, I'll mention a couple of, you know, uh, I'm thinking Squid Game. I had Greg Chun on, on my show uh, okay. this, this last, yeah, day before, you know, day before yesterday. Okay. Uh, because he's the, the uh, American voice for the Korean show Squid Game. Right. Of the, of the lead actor. Okay. And, uh, and lately, I've been doing quite a bit of dubbing, which is a new huge area. Uh, used to be you would think dubbing anime, right, right, or you were a Spanish speaker right. uh, doing something uh, in Spanish dubbed from English, or vice versa. Now it's every language to every language, right. Uh, I'm doing a number of those uh that are going to come out that i can't talk about what they are but uh it's it's very interesting work can't wait uh, we can't wait yeah whatever it, it is it, it, there's some cool stuff some cool. cool stuff very cool yeah well so we'll have we'll have all that up all your socials everything that legally we can talk about right now but we can't wait to see what you're up to in the next little bit and uh hope you you and your family stay safe and thank you again so much for oh yeah happy holidays that. thank you uh merry christmas um Aaron, Luis, well, we, we, you know, yeah. no family there, Luis, just mom. Right. There's yeah. some girls going to love you one day. Oh, no, he's going to, he's going to be, no, he's, he's, he's loved by everyone though. That isn't that much better, Louis, or no, not really. No, no, you want that. No, he wants, want he wants a girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one yeah. Woman I want that hot, I want that hot girl. Yeah. But I want a hot chick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who also has a brain, right? I mean, she's got to have You know, I, um, I, I, I've had this conversation before where I've said that, like, I kind of blame my parents that the, I have to find someone who's smart, who's capable.